actor's attitude and source. Write each heading in your notebook, leave enough space to, me to make notes, read the text, make notes under each heading. Now, in class, that can be turned into a wonderfully collaborative activity. Uh, how we do it in a face-to-face -face session is that the students re read the text individually first and they make notes. We then take the text back from the, te from the students uh, and organize them into groups of three and they compare their notes under each of the headings. Now, usually and hopefully, the students realize that they would like to read the text again to elaborate on their notes. So they compare their notes, they copy each other, they share their notes with each other. Hopefully there's some gaps in their knowledge. So what we do to make it collaborative is we give one of the three the text back and we tell that person that they are responsible for finding the information that the group needs and then reporting back to the, to the other members of the group. And so we get a lovely collaborative uh, reading activity. And again, if we can model this in class, and get their students used to this idea of looking for gist, looking for details, looking for attitude, then they can do it with um, any text. Okay, so that's just another example of, um, of a reading procedure. Uh, there's a couple of questions in the text. We'll, uh, we're going to see those at the end, right? The questions. So don't worry, we'll deal with those at the end. Okay, so that was another example of giving a task structure, not just go home and read three texts, but making sure students understand what they can do with a text and kind of structuring the reading in such a way that they, they, they can see themselves doing it. Okay, now there's one more example of giving structure. Okay, so um, we were talking earlier about vocabulary and researchers, experts, um, estimate that if students can build a working vocabulary of 3,000 word families, then they will be able to understand approximately 95% of spoken interaction, right? So if we get up to 3,000 words, we can understand 95% of speech, general kind of English speech. And um, it's estimated that learning 800 words per year in English class is possible to work towards this bigger target if we have an organized vocabulary uh, learning strategy at the school. And the most effective way for students to learn the basic form and meaning of a word is through flashcards, right? Yeah, whether it's, you know, flashcards on card, or whether it's flashcards on an app on your phone, and I'll give you a suggestion for a good app at the end of the session. Using flashcards is a really, really effective way to um, learn vocabulary. The numbers that I just mentioned uh, in the chat, sorry, 3,000 words to understand 95%, that's according to Paul Nation, okay? So that should be, all right? So we need to learn vocabulary, and the most effective way of doing it is using either physical or flashcard apps on the phone. The reason why flashcards work, guys, the reason why flashcards work is because they involve retrieval, right? Retrieval practice. Now, retrieval means bringing information to mind. Retrieval means taking information from your long-term memory and bringing it into your working memory to do something with it. Okay, and scientists believe that memory is strengthened for retrieved information when students engage in retrieval practice, when they engage in taking it from their long-term memory and bringing it into their working memory, okay? So this is why flashcards work. Now, if your students just have their vocabulary written in a list in their notebooks and they have the English word and the translation, and they review the, the list, that doesn't involve retrieval. That just involves decoding. But the, the reason why flashcards work is because we have the word on one side, the translation on the other, and when I see the word without looking at the translation, I try to retrieve it, right? And that's what strengthens the memory connections, right? So that's why flashcards or flashcard apps work. So the basic procedure is that I have a new Spanish word for me, in my case, reventar, on one side, and on the other side, I have my translation, okay? And I have, what, at any one time, 
I'm going to have, I don't know, between 10 and 30 words in my flashcard pile. And I'm going to go through my list and I'm going to see my new word and I'm going to try and retrieve the translation, right? Now, if I successfully retrieve the translation, I'm going to put the card to one side and I'm going to keep going through the pile. If I'm unable to retrieve the translation, then the word goes to the bottom of the pile and it comes back later in my retrieval session. Right? So that's basically how flashcards work. Right? Now, once I have successfully learned those translations, then I just switch it round and then I do the same procedure again with the translations and I try to retrieve the target word. And that's obviously more difficult, right? but probably more useful for productive language use. Okay? So retrieval practice enables us to learn tons of vocabulary and it's the most effective way to do it. But again, we need to structure this in class so students understand exactly how to do it. So in class or in a, in a, in a virtual class or in a face-to-face -face class, we can demonstrate retrieval through really simple flashcard games, right? So I'm gonna demonstrate one to you now. Uh, I'm gonna be student A and all 649, yes, my new record, 649 of you are student B, okay? And the objective in each round of the game is, well, one person starts with the cards, that's me, and in, then you have to win the cards from me by re retrieving the words, okay? And we're gonna play in three rounds, okay? So here we go, round one. In round one, I am going to show you and say the target word then I'm gonna show you the translation. I'm gonna show you the target word again, and you need to retrieve the translation. Okay, you ready? And you can tell me in the chat box. Ready? Okay. So, don't laugh at my Spanish, those of you in Mexico and Peru, okay? Reventar. Burst. Okay, now look, let's, Follow, follow my instructions, guys, not because I like to be in control, because I do, but because this is the procedure for retrieval. So, Reventar, but first, I show you the card again, now you tell me the translation. Burst, burst, burst. Okay, so now you'll retrieve the word. Okay, next. Okay. De un tirón. in one go. De un tirón. Now retrieve it and tell me in the chat. In one go, in one go, yeah. Okay. So you would keep the card, okay. So every time you retrieve the word successfully, you keep the card. Next one. Elenco. Retrieve the word, retrieve the word. Cast, cast, cast. Okay, one more, one more Spanish word for you or one more Spanish lexical item for you. Okay. Aplazamiento. Okay, so you say it or you, okay, I show you the translation. Delay. I show you aplazamiento again and you tell me. Delay. Okay, so that's round one. And if you've successfully retrieved the words and told me the words, you keep all the cards, and then we repeat, repeat the procedure, but now you elicit the items from me and I, re I retrieve the items. Okay, that's round one. Okay, now I've got all of the cards back because I'm an amazing Spanish learner and I won all of the cards back. And we're gonna go back to the beginning of the pile and we're gonna play round two. Okay, so now in round two, I'm just going to show you the card and I want you to retrieve the translation. You ready? So, reventar, tell me in the chat box, burst, 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 burst. Okay? Okay. Next. De un tiron, in one go, in one go, yeah, okay. Brilliant. Next. Elenco, retrieve, retrieve the word, elenco. Right, good, you keep the cards, you keep the cards. 
final one.